high water is in your house and this person is acting a fool and that person is acting a fool and oh my God, Jesus, you get a bump along the way. We know what it's like when we drive and we run into what is called a speed bump. All of a sudden, it's something that's unexpected. You know, when you're driving through a residential area and you don't expect to get a bump in the road, but all of a sudden you see this bump and you go over this bump and you're driving a little bit too fast for the bump and you might knock a hole in your tire. Oh, come on and help me, God. We're talking about bumps in the road on the day. We're talking about flat tires on the day. Does anybody get a bump? out here and now and then. I'm talking about inside of Obashatasada, your life on the day. I know that I've had some blowouts in my time. Oh yes, I'm going through a blowout even right now. I don't think that I'm exempt from the blowout because the Bible declares anybody that lives godly in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. Do I have anybody in the house on the night that has suffered persecution? Do I have anybody in the house on the night that is in a persecution? Oh, yes, y'all looking all dead at me on a day, but you all might as well get on the road with me because there are some bumps in a row. It's all right if I get an amen here and there. It's all right if I get a go ahead and preach, girlfriend. It's all right if I get a go ahead and say it, sister. Somebody ought to tell me to preach. I feel as though God may have a word on a day. It says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God with when you're in that bump in the road. But the Bible says that they are corrupt and have a dump, a done abominable iniquity. What does it mean about iniquity? Well, what do you mean when you say the righteous does iniquity? Because the Bible says to not have faith is sin. Oh, come on and help me, God, right there. Sin equals iniquity. If you look at iniquity and put it up against sin, it means the same. Thing. And the Bible says that faith and not without Obashaka Son of God, believing is sin. Oh, hallelujah, God, Jesus. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. And God is saying, because you say in your heart, there is no God. And I'm not there with you. And I don't see the things that you're going through. And I don't see your bump in the road. Oh, yes, there are some sinners in the house. There is some sin going on in the body of Christ. There is some sin going on out there. Oh, why is that? Because some of us are choosing not to walk by faith. You know, the Bible declares that you've got to walk by faith and not by sight. What are you saying on a night, woman of God? What I'm saying is that when you get that bump in the road, you cannot look at the bump in the road, but you've got to look straight ahead. I don't care if you continue to drive that car on a flat. You know how you get a flat tire and you say, I'm going to ride on this thing anyway because I'm not stopping to get out and see. I'm going to make it up to the station ahead and let them pop the tires off and let them change the flat. And this is what God is saying on the night that I want to be your service master. I want to service the car that you're driving. Oh yes, my God, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Somebody ought to give God a hand clap in the house of night. Hallelujah, Jesus. For God is said in his word. Oh, my shot, my son of God. He shot my son of God. God said that he stretches out his hand to the herb and swallowed them thereof. And the mercy hath forth for the people which hath he redeemed them and guided them in his strength unto a holy habitation. What are you saying on a day, woman of God? I'm saying that this is the song that Moses sang out in the book of Exodus. He said that God has stretched out his hand. What did he stretch out his hand and do? Well, I can imagine when the people got to the Red Sea, they were running from that old Pharaoh. You know what I'm talking about? That bump in the road. All the children of Israel had met their match on that day. They had met that Pharaoh that said, 
I will not let your people go. I know your people want to serve you, and I know that your people want to worship you, but see, I've got to pray with these people, but God said in the word, when the enemy has done bit bad for you, I'm going to turn it around for your good. So never mind that bump in the road. Never mind that speed bump. I know that bump can come unexpected. And the Bible said that when they got to the Red Sea, all of a sudden they looked back and they saw Pharaoh in his chariot. The Bible said 500 choice horsemen were following in behind them in a great hot pursuit. If I could just go ahead and tell the story. Is this all right with you? Oh yes, the devil was hot on their trail and they were headed to the sea. But what they did not understand is that when Jesus told them to go by that way and tap and wait, that God had said them up for a miracle. So what are you saying on a day, woman of God? I'm saying that God has put the bump in the road himself because God took the children of Israel about the way where the Red Sea was. And so much that Pharaoh thought of, that they were lost and didn't know the way of the land. Are you, you mean to tell me that God took them by a way that they could not cross on purpose? Oh yes, so that God could manifest the glory inside of his deliverance. Somebody ought to say, God is going to get the glory. I know I'm in a bump in the road, but God is going to get the glory of what I'm going through. So these children of Israel, they got around the Red Sea, and everybody was encamped all around them. Somebody ought to say the devil was there, looking to seek to devour, saying, I just can't wait to taste you. I'm almost there to you. But the Bible said that there was a pillar of fire by night and a light by the day to lead the children of Israel. Oh, I don't know what you're going through on today, but God is still yet leading you by the way. He might have led you into the bump of the road, but never mind that. And the children of Israel got to uh, that place of the Red Sea, and they looked back behind them, and they said, Pharaoh is going to devour us. Oh, what are we going to do now? And Moses said, Oh my God, Jesus. God, why have you forsaken us? Moses began to question God. I know you brought me here to lead these people. And I've led these people as far as I can take them. See, another thing you've got to understand is that who you're looking to to deliver you, they can only take you so far. What do you do when you get to the Red Sea? They can only take you so far. It's like when I pick up my girl at the end of the day. She say, Mom, come get me from school. I can only take her so far. I can take her to school every day. But when I drop her off at college, she's got to depend on God for herself. She got to say it's for God I live. And she got to say it's for God I die. Mommy can only take you so far. Daddy can only take you so far. Girlfriend can only take you so far. But what do you do when you get to the bump of the road of the Red Sea and they're standing there nowhere to go the enemy all around ready to seek and devour and all of a sudden God told Moses Moses what are you doing he said I'm standing here waiting on you he said what do you have in your hand I've got here this staff he said hold it up now and watch me do my thing sometimes you just gotta hold up now the staff that you have in your hand. That staff that you have in your hand is this here word of God. Oh my God, Jesus. God is saying on the night, what do you have in your hand? Oh, you've got the sword of the spirit. God is saying, what do you have in your hand? And you have the word of God. It is the truth of life. The devil can't come up against this. When you get to that bump of the road, just pull out your Bible and start reading the scriptures. And the Bible declares, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Somebody ought to say she preaching now. Oh my God, Jesus. The Bible said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Oh my God, Jesus. The Bible 
Bible said, I'm the head and not the tail. The Bible said, I'm above and not beneath. Somebody ought to say, she's preaching now. Somebody ought to say, move for the Lord. And the Bible said, when you get to the bus of the road, never mind the bump. Don't even worry about the flat tire. Look at your neighbor and say, keep driving, girl. Look at your neighbor and say, keep on driving, girl. Run the wheels off that tire. If you're not a go metal to metal, bone to bone, and flesh to flesh. Walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, somebody ought to say, uh, she's in the spirit now. Oh, come on, y'all. And let's magnify God. Uh, I don't care what bumper. Uh, you get in the road. Uh, keep on driving. Uh, you gonna drive it till the wheels fall off. You gonna drive it till uh, the brakes fall off. You gonna drive it till uh, there's nothing left. You gonna drive it till uh, there's no gas. You're going off supernatural. It's supernatural. Your faith ought to be supernatural. Oh, it's supernatural. Walking by faith and not by sight. I know you met that bump in the road, but it's all right. The children of Israel. Oh, my God, Jesus. Moses stretched out his staff, and the Bible declares all that night, the walls of the sea came up on the west. The walls of the sea came up on the east. Oh, the Bible declares that when they look down, they saw dry land. And when you go through the thing, when you look down, you will see dry land. I don't care what you're going through. Every obstacle, every tribulation, every meditation, wrecking your vein, can't get no peace. Worry about it all night long. The devil is a liar. We come into authority like Moses did. All you got to do is believe in what you got in your head. Oh my God, Jesus. You got to believe in this word. The word that said no one can form the issue. Real prosper. The word that said you're more than a conqueror. The word that said oh my God, Jesus. Did the enemy get bad? God's going to turn it around for my good. Oh, you got to keep pressing. It's supernatural. It's called faith. Walking by faith and not by sight. You can't walk by what you see, uh, but you gotta walk by what the word say. Uh, and what does the word say? The word says, uh, Greater is he that's in me uh, than he that's in the world. The word said, uh, Oh my God, Jesus. My God is a butler and a fence all around me. Don't so never mind those typical difficulties. Uh, you gonna get them anyway. Folks getting all up in your mix. Uh, make it all type of noise. You heard the computer. Uh, it don't have to come by a computer. Uh, it can come back to somebody else. Uh, whoever you talk to on the phone, uh, you can just be laying there at night, uh, and all of a sudden your phone rings, uh, and you pick it up. Uh, girl, uh, what you gonna do about that? Uh, girl, uh, I don't know how you gonna make it out that. Uh, girl, uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, but you gotta tell that devil, uh, I delete you uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, sometimes you gotta delete a demon. Uh, oh, come on, y'all. Uh, get that thing up out of your mix. That thing is talking. Uh, I swear to you, uh, the word of God. Uh, if it happens to the dead, uh, I don't want to hear it. Uh, if it happens to the dead, uh, I'm going with that. Uh, and the Bible says, Hallelujah, Jesus, that the people walk on dry land. Can you imagine that? Pharaoh uh, all around uh, with his army uh, capped all around, uh, chariot of a 10,000, uh, pursuing them out on the trail. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, God's people, uh, they walked on dry land, uh, and God allowed them to get through. Uh, and they looked back, uh, and Pharaoh said, I'm going to follow them. Uh, I'm going to pursue them even harder, because uh, I believe that God is with me. Uh, he made even the land dry for me. Uh, but that's the devil. He'll take your blessing uh, and try to make it his blessing. Uh, but the Bible said uh, that God raises up his hand uh, against the works of the enemy. Uh, God raises up his hand uh, against those that are against his children. Uh, oh, you don't have to worry about that bump in the road. Uh, or oh, the Bible said uh, 
that as soon as they got over to the other side, that the water came crashing down in on Pharaoh and all his men. The water came crashing down in on Pharaoh and all his chariots. And not one will survive. But you got to check this out. Before Pharaoh left the house, before Pharaoh left the camp, the Bible said that he gathered all his men, all his choice men, the best men that he had. Oh, scratch that. All the men that he had. And although the enemy of the, is putting out every enemy against you on the day, backbiter, lying on you, telling stories, even if it's all in your mind, the enemy can put this in your mind, backbite you in your mind, lie to you in your mind, and tell you you know you can't do that. You know you ain't going to be able to do that. You know that ain't going to work that way. But God said in his word, if I decree it, and I declare it, you can take it to the bank. Oh, come on, somebody. There was a man by the name of Jesus that met God in that night one day. And the Bible said he met God in the night. And he was there all alone. For he had sent everybody else above. And he stayed back to pray with the Lord. And the Bible declares that an angel of the Lord met him there in that night. And the Bible said he wrestled and pulled him with that angel all night. Uh, he wrestled with uh, uh, the angel all night. Uh, but the Bible said, uh, we wrestle not uh, against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities. Uh, see, Jacob chose uh, to wrestle with God. Uh, but the Bible said, uh, some of us wrestle with uh, uh, the enemy himself. Uh, you don't have to wrestle with flesh and blood, uh, uh, but wrestle with God. Uh, and the Bible said, uh, that ain't that Jacob wrestled with uh, uh, the angel all night long. Uh, and the angel told Jacob, uh, let me go. Uh, but Jacob said, uh, I won't let you go uh, until you bless me. Uh, see, sometimes uh, we wrestle with the wrong thing. Uh, what does wrestle mean? Uh, it leads to toil, uh, to contemplate, uh, to think about it, uh, to go back and forth. Uh, but God said in his word, uh, have your feet shotted. Uh, that means have your feet covered. Uh, have them firmly planted uh, in the things of God. Uh, we're talking about the word of God. Uh, and the Bible said, uh, the word of God said uh, that Jacob wrestled with uh, the angel of God all night. Uh, and he said, let me go. Uh, and Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go uh, until you bless me. Uh, and the Bible said, uh, the angel of the Lord told Jacob, uh, you have prevailed. Uh, and this day forward, uh, no longer is your name Jacob, uh, but I call you Israel. Uh, oh, come on, somebody. Uh, it's an Israel blessing in the room. Uh, what does Israel mean? Uh, it means to go from this level to that level. Uh, for before Jacob was just Jacob. Uh, but God named him Israel. Uh, the whole nations of the world. Uh, he didn't bless him with one. Uh, but he blessed him with the whole world. Uh, but he said your, your sea shall be as the sea of the sand. That's what we've got to understand on the night. I told you earlier. God said go from this level to this level. And Jacob was a man that said, I'm going to choose to wrestle with God. Oh, I'm going to choose I'm going to, to wrestle with God. Uh, I'm not going to wrestle with flesh and blood uh, or principalities uh, or rulers of the darkness uh, of this wicked world uh, and high places. Uh, I'm not going to wrestle with uh, those that mock me. Uh, I'm not going to wrestle with uh, those that scandalize me. Uh, what does it mean to be mocked? Uh, a mock is a hideous laugh. Uh, oh, come on, somebody. Uh, the Bible said that uh, when Sarah gave her baby uh, a full born birth uh, that the other lady uh, oh come on somebody uh, the other lady uh, she came in uh, and she mocked oh, gosh, I gotta take it in her the lady came in uh, turn your Bible uh, to Genesis 21 uh, the lady came in uh, Genesis is the first book of uh, Genesis 21 in the fifth chapter the lady came in uh, oh, gosh, I gotta, and she mocked her. I don't care what you're going through. Sometimes you go through what are called mocking spirits. And a mocking spirit will laugh at you when God is still yet blessing you in your face. The mocking spirit will make you want to think that God is not doing anything for you. But the devil is a lie. We came to reveal the, the curtains off of Satan. We came to take the covers off of the 
enemy. Genesis 21. Oh, Basha Kassan of God. I need somebody to read that for me. Genesis 21. Oh, Bishara Son of God. Oh, Clone Sierra. We got to get this in our spirit. I know it's 5 o'clock, but we're going to get this in our spirit. I know we've been working all day, but we got to get this in our spirit. Genesis 21. In the fifth verse, Genesis 21. Oh, Basha Kassan of God. Yisha Kassan of God. And I want you to read the eighth verse and stop at the tenth verse. Come on, let's go. When the child grew old enough to stop nursing, Abraham made a special supper on that day. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, making fun of Isaac. Okay, stop right there. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar. Who was Hagar? Hagar was, hallelujah, God, the slave woman that Abraham had the baby with. But they had that baby. Sarah and Abraham had that baby at 100 years old. And the Bible declares that when God came to Sarah and said, you're going to have a baby, she laughed at God. Oh, come on, somebody. And the Bible says that when the baby came, the baby grew. Hallelujah, Jesus. Read that again for us, Sierra. Eight. When the child grew old enough to stop nursing, Abraham made a special supper on that day. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, making fun of Isaac. Abraham was the father of Hagar's son. Hallelujah, God, Jesus. And so my Bible said, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking her. Her Bible says making fun of her. And my Bible says mocking her. Well, what does it mean to be mocked? See, you got to check this out. Sarah and Abraham had this baby at about 100 years old. That means that God had defeated the odds of them having a baby. That means that the reproductive system was no longer a system. It had shut down at about the 100 years old. Where you can stop producing eggs when you turn about 50 plus. Oh, come on, somebody. We're talking about uh, the body and the way it works. And all of a sudden, uh, God said, I'm going to bless you with a child. And about the age of 100 years old, uh, she had this baby. If you don't believe me, uh, read a few chapters earlier. She had this baby. She defeated the odds. Uh, God wants to defeat the odds of your situation. Uh, what you're going Going through. God want to make it supernatural, but all of a sudden here come the devil and want to mock her blessing and say, "Girl, look at that baby. He got a big nose. He got big ears. He got big lips. Oh, this is what I can imagine him saying. And look at God blessing you. And the devil want to come along and say, "Girl, what you gonna do about that? Oh, that ain't nothing but a bump in the road. I don't know what you're talking about. All of a sudden the enemy come along and say, there is." No no future at the end of that rainbow. There is no light at the end of your tunnel. God has blessed you to be here and living and moving and breathing. As long as you're living and moving and breathing, that's a supernatural blessing right there. But God breathed in to man. He breathed in the hell the breath of light. That's a supernatural right there. You gotta get this down in your spirit. And then all of a sudden, the devil come along and say, you ain't gonna make it. You gotta look that the enemy right in the Bible. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says uh, that Sarah told Abraham, cast this bond woman out of this city, out of this house, so where she shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. She got that devil up out of her house. And she said, you gotta leave here this day. I don't care if you pack your bags. I don't care if you take them to the curb. You can even throw them out the window. But you got about one point second to leave up out of my house. And somebody ought to tell the enemy, you got about zero seconds to get up out of my mind. You got to kill the enemy. You got about zero seconds to get up out of my house. See, because I'm walking in a miracle, God has got me to move and live and breathe and have my being. And you're going to come along and think you're going to take my blessing from me. The devil is a liar. Sometimes you got to stand up against the enemy. Sometimes you got to take a leap of faith. Sometimes you got to be bold as a liar. The Bible said to be bold as a liar. I know it's the book of the road, but you got to tell that bumper, I'm going to drive you until the wheels fall off. I'm going to drive you from metal to metal, and I'm going to make it to the service master, because he already got a plan in his hand. Oh, come on, let's